Hi, I'm Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory at UAB. And this is continuing our series of short videos where we're talking about the laboratory and the projects that we're running. Today I want to give a, a big thank you to all the participants who are in our daily blood draw study, people who are in the study right now or who have participated in the past. This is the study where you come in for 25 consecutive days and we take blood every day. It's a very a burdensome study. It's a lot to ask someone to do, uh, even if somebody is completely healthy, to ask them to come into the laboratory for 25 days and get a blood draw, that's quite a bit. But then if you ask that of someone who has chronic pain or fatigue, that's, that's a pretty big request. And so we appreciate very much people are willing to give their time and effort to come in and do that study. And I want to explain why we're doing this and why I think it's so important and how we're getting information that no one else in the world can get uh, from a study like this. Uh, first, before I talk about that, uh, just as an aside, I want to also thank my great laboratory. As I mentioned before, we have 22 people in the laboratory now. It's gotten quite large, an incredible group of young scientists. And my birthday was last week, and they all pitched in and got me a gift. And I opened up the box, and it was a light for doing videos. So um, I'm in the process of learning how to use that and <laughs> improve the videos that we're putting out. But I, I thank them for uh, for getting that for me. So uh, back to the project. Let me tell you how this daily blood draw study started and where we're going with it next and how I think it's going to help fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome and some other conditions. So this started with um, quite a long time ago with the study I was doing in fibromyalgia. So I run clinical trials uh, with new drugs such as low-dose naltrexone and when I do a clinical trial I like to give people a handheld computer like a tablet or a phone and they can track their symptoms every day while they're in the study and I like doing that because that shows me what's happening in the real world while they're at home and also since we get symptoms every day I can really closely track how long it takes for their symptoms to get better. So if someone's in one of my clinical trials and they have one of these devices, they'll first go through a baseline period. So they'll just track their symptoms without taking our medication. And then they'll start our medication and we can see if the symptoms go down. So I ran a couple of these clinical trials and I started looking at the data and pulling them up and plotting them on the computer to see how the drug was working. While I was doing that, I, I kept noticing that the baseline period for all these participants, their pain and fatigue was extremely variable from day to day. It wasn't like they were always saying, hey, I'm a 6 out of 10 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It was Monday was a normal day, then Wednesday was a really bad day, then Friday was actually a little better of a day. It was extremely variable from day to day. The pain and fatigue were going up and down, sometimes slowly like week to week and sometimes sharply from day to day. And so I started looking at this more and more and when I noticed that almost everyone was exhibiting that pattern, I thought there's something important here. If you can have better days and worse days, that means there is something happening to you, something happening in the body or some kind of exposure that's driving your symptom severity. And if we can figure out what that is, if we can determine what makes a day a good day, what makes a day a bad day, what's different physiologically between those two days, then I think we'll have something important for developing new treatments. And so I started trying to think of ways to actually investigate that. Now, one of my main hypotheses with fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue syndrome or related disorders is that they're being driven by inflammatory processes, that there's some kind of abnormal inflammation happening in the body. So to figure out what's driving these symptoms, I first wanted to look at inflammatory signals that are in the blood. And so the idea is we take blood draws every day in the same time period where people are tracking their symptoms and then we look in the blood and we try to determine what in the blood is going up and down 
with their symptoms. What's high on a bad day? What's low on a good day? And if we track that over time, we can come up with a profile for people that show what's driving their symptoms. So whatever that is in the blood that's tracking with their symptoms, that becomes a target for new interventions. And so I first did this with three, just as a pilot, I did it with three women with fibromyalgia. And a few things came out, but there was one thing in particular that popped out in all three women. And that was a uh, an analyte called leptin. And I don't want to get into what leptin is. We'll do a separate video on that because it just would take too much time to talk about. But the short story is it's a, a chemical produced by your fat cells that suppress your appetite, but they also cause inflammation in the brain. And so they can cause pain sensitivity and fatigue. It's something that spikes when you get the flu and it's part of the process that makes you uh, feel bad. So it was interesting to see this come out tracking with symptoms in all three women with fibromyalgia. And so I just decided to look at this in chronic fatigue syndrome. So we received a small pilot grant at Stanford to look at this in 10 women with chronic fatigue syndrome. And we found the exact same thing when we looked at chronic fatigue syndrome. There were a number of inflammatory chemicals that were tracking with the good and bad days, but leptin was the best predictor. And again, we'll talk about this another time, but that is very fascinating because of what we know, how leptin can cross into the brain, can sensitize immune system uh, immune cells in the brain and cause things like pain and fatigue and, and cognitive disruption and other problems. And so we got really excited to see this, and we were able to take those data and get a large grant from the National Institutes of Health to do this in 100-plus women. And so that's what we're doing right now. This is a very large study. It's five years. We're about halfway through or so. And so we're still taking people who are close to Birmingham who can come into the laboratory and can do this study for 25 consecutive days. And now we're getting interested in adding other analytes. So clearly inflammation is playing a big role in these symptoms, but we're also trying to test other predictors as well. So we recently did sex hormones. So estradiol, progesterone, testosterone, and that also worked extremely well. I can't talk about that study just yet. I can't show you those results but we are submitting the paper tomorrow. And as soon as that's accepted for scientific publication, I'll share those results with you because they look really neat. Ultimately, what I wanna do is combine the inflammatory markers with sex hormones and a few other things. And the way it's looking right now, if we can combine all those things, we can create a model that will get well over 90% to predicting all the variation of pain and fatigue and fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. We're already hitting with sex hormones and inflammation about 80%. So we're doing a very good job at explaining why people have good days and bad days just by measuring a few things in the blood. Okay, so what happens next? As I mentioned, we're gonna be running this study for a while. We're still recruiting, and if you're close to the Birmingham, Alabama region and you're interested in participating, you can look at the description below this video and you can find a link to the online screener. You can fill out that online screener. We'll look over that information, we'll get back to you, and if you meet the criteria, you can participate in the study. This year, we're also going to work with some labs in cities that are close to Birmingham, but too far for people to drive in every day. For example, Huntsville, Alabama, where there's groups of people who want to participate. And we'll work with some labs that are local to them so they can go into that lab and do the study without having to come to Birmingham. So that's going to start this year. And then probably next year, uh, 2018, we will hire a phlebotomist to go to homes of people with chronic fatigue syndrome who are so severely affected that they can't leave their house and maybe can't even leave their bed because we want to be able to do a version of the study in them to see do they have the same thing but it's just a much more severe version of it in terms of looking at what's dysregulated in the blood or do they have something else that's happening that's causing their symptoms. I think it's very important to know what's going on at the most severe end of MECFS because those individuals are very 
understudied. So we will continue this. We're going to be looking at different analytes. We have samples being analyzed right now. Very excited to see the results of those. And again, as always, as soon as we get the information, we're allowed to talk about it. We will do a video on that. There are pieces of this that are very interesting that I couldn't touch on in this video, but we'll do subsequent videos on those and give you a good idea of what we're finding and how that's important to you if you're suffering from this and what you may be able to do about it because that's the ultimate goal of this is to take this information and turn it into things you can change or treatments or interventions we can use to improve these symptoms so you can manage this and hopefully ultimately so we can knock these diseases out completely. So that's all for now. Um, thank you everyone and uh, we'll do a new video very soon. Bye.